What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Figure It Out, Out of the Basement's Black Series talk show. I'm Nate, joined with Justin. What's up, guys? And today it is time for the 2024 Top 10 Black Series figures of all time. Yep, this is the final video of like our end of the year slash beginning of the year heavy hitting videos. Mm -hmm. It's usually when a lot of new people are introduced to the channel. So welcome. Thank you guys for all your support on the top 10 of 2023, mm -hmm. the Black Series Awards, what to expect in 2024. So here we are, the top 10 of all time, our 2024 edition. Hit like, subscribe if you're new. We're always talking about the Black Series here on the channel. Nate, we kind of had a rough time. This was tough. This was really a tough list. So many great figures have come out mm -hmm. recently. So many just last year, too. Yeah. So when we were debating on this list, we locked it down relatively quickly. But then literally right before we went to yeah. go film this, uh, you had a suggestion. And it was something that really couldn't be ignored. So we kind of had to change the tail end of the list. But yeah, Fig Fury brought it up. So shout out to Fig. Yeah. Thank you, Fig. And of course, we would love to know what your top 10 is of all time in the comments down below. But like always, we're going to start it out with one honorable mention, just one. And that is the modal nodes. We're cheating. We're already cheating. We're already cheating. <laughs> Figger and Dan or Nail and Chill, take your pick. We have both. We love both. Yeah. So for this list this time around, which there are going to be some crazy, insane omissions, mm. some typical picks oh, yeah. that might not be on this list because we are now in 2024 and I'm just... I'm looking at this through the lens of like, yeah, some of this stuff was good for the time, mm -hmm. but this is it, like an all time list. And I think another thing that you and I both did is really focus on our favorite figures. Yeah. Like what brings us the most joy? And I would be lying if I said having the modal nodes in the line didn't bring me, you know, top 10 material worth oh, of joy. Absolutely particularly when it comes to Nal and Chiel, and we got the rest of the instruments and they took the time to make all the different alternate hands so that you could properly grip all of the instruments. Mm -hmm. It was just something that, you know, you don't see every day in the Black Series. Right. And it was awesome that they went all out for something like the Cantina Band, which is something that you and I have particularly wanted in the Black Series yes. for a very long time. Right, all those alternate hands and the pure satisfaction you get when you have four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, whatever you want, really, band mm -hmm. members up on that stage. Yeah. It just really helps expand the world. It's pretty good for world building, mm -hmm. which is kind of few and far between for Black Series. So we couldn't not mention the modal nodes. Coming in at number 10, recency bias or not, I don't <laughs> care. Right. It's Darth Malgus. Yes. What an amazing figure. Again, this is one of those figures where Justin and I aren't super familiar with the character, but you just can't deny the design. You can't deny the just amazing detail and engineering that went into the figure itself. It is a great, big, bulky boy, well articulated, well detailed. It might be the most imposing character, you know, figure in the entire line. Might be the most imposing biggest shelf presence, very threatening. Mm -hmm. The photo reel application is expertly done. They even gave him a larger lightsaber blade because he's such a larger character. And Black Series, you know, Hasbro, the team finally figured out how to do a hood, yeah. a soft goods hood. Who would have thought all it was is two dabs of glue. And, you know, putting it under that, those shoulder pads. Yeah, and right. Yeah, they just did a wonderful job. Maybe we could have got some lightning effect hands, but I'm just saying that because I know someone's going to comment it, but I personally don't really care. Right, this was our number one of 2023, and it was so, such an easy choice for figure of the year last year. I feel like we both just were like, he's going on the list. Yeah, absolutely. And moving on to number nine, here is the pick that slid in at the mm -hmm. very last minute, and it is the Empire Strikes Back Dagobah Luke and Yoda training two-pack. Again, thank you, Fig, for bringing this up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how we forgot about this uh, figure set. 
the best Luke Skywalker? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think strongest Mark Hamill likeness, best articulation. Right. The Yoda is a 100% new sculpt right. that is properly scaled. Also comes with an alternate head where he has his eyes closed. So he could stick his hand out like he's using the Force. Mm -hmm. The backpack, putting him on the backpack, you know, Luke also comes with an alternate hand of either a Force push or the handstand well he comes hand. with, he comes with two because he also comes with the uh x-wing yeah. raising hand as right. well so, so we got some alt hands with the set and you could literally have them hand standing yeah i did in my review back in the day mm -hmm. you can watch me live handstand him unedited and i wanted to make sure that i did that in the video and i actually did it and that is again a testament to the engineering of the Luke figure. They made sure that you could freestand pose him one-handed. Yeah. <laughs> like, crazy. Such a great value for what's included. Super iconic set. I love that Hasbro's kind of bringing back two packs. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they keep that going. So that is our number nine pick. Number eight is Cad Bane from The Clone Wars. Yes. A pretty common appearance mm -hmm. you know on the top 10 of all time list but well deserved yeah absolutely it, again it was one of those figures that this was kind of around the turning point of the black series when mm -hmm. we entered into what we like to refer to as like the golden age yeah. um where the figures have just been incredible the character selection off the hook and this cad bane was something that we wanted for a really long time and they just absolutely crushed it we knew we were like aliens are always going to be good in the black series yes. but they just took it to a different level with with this cad bane yeah it, there's so much personality in the likeness mm -hmm. as well that's something they've continued to do with other interpretations of cad bane there's also a decent amount of paint on the entire figure as well yeah. uh, yeah. like some dry brushing on the actual costume itself which is something we unfortunately don't see too much anymore these days true that is true and he's also just really well articulated. I mean, there's mm -hmm. not really a pose that you can't hit with Cad Bane. You know, if you want to have him holding his hat, he can do it. Pushing it up with the blaster, he yep. can do it. Like all the classic Clone Wars Cad Bane poses you want, you can get with the figure. And if you're a Black Series veteran collector, you will know there was a point in time where we just never in a million years thought we were going to get a Clone Wars Cad Bane. Right. So it just has a special place in our hearts. This next figure is also very special as well. Our seventh Black Series figure of all time is number 59, Captain Rex. The number we know by heart. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much the only number I know by heart. Yeah. Maybe Django. Is Django Fett 14 or 15? See, I can't even remember. Yeah, but, right. Okay, so Captain Rex. What an amazing figure. Again, another figure where we were like, we're never going to get this. And then back in the day, we even said, and if we do get it, it's going to be the yeah, Rebels version. Exactly. So when they were like, here's Clone Wars, Captain Rex, you and I, we were both just like. <laughs> and then we learned they were modifying the old clone trooper body to actually be able to utilize those double joints. Mm -hmm. Because the old, old clone body, the one from like 2013, 2014, had double jointed elbows, but it was literally an obtuse angle because the plastic was so thick mm -hmm. on the inside of the elbow. So they finally cut away that plastic. Uh, it's other, it's slightly different as well. The proportions on Rex are so, so, so good. Yeah. One of the best photo reel likenesses mm -hmm. of the entire line. We actually have a Black Series banger up on the channel about this figure. And it's just so great. Articulation, proportions, photo reel. Trigger finger on the left hand would have been nice. It would have. Expert weathering, too, back in the day when Hasbro yeah. knew how to do proper paint and weathering for Black Series. Yep. One of just the best examples of a figure that is a little bit older, but still actually stands up today, you know? Yeah, Art more than holds up. Articulation's a little dated, but just the full package of, of Captain Rex. Mm -hmm. You understand why he's the most expensive Black Series figure. Mm -hmm. Number six is a brand new figure, and this is something we have been waiting like a decade for. <laughs> Literally a decade. Yep. And it's R2-D2. The new sculpt, the 100% new astromech. I know some people are probably going to think recency bias on this one, but this figure was just a godsend because it mm -hmm. was so desperately 
needed. Yep. For years and years and years, as most veteran collectors know, the R2-D2 body was severely undersized, like mm -hmm. comically undersized. Yes. And they just continued to release every single astromech on this same body. So we got an R5 and it was too small. We got Dagobah R2, again, yeah. too small. We got a bunch of different Imperial repaints yeah. and they all suffered from the same issue. This figure was just way too small and had that really awful gimmick where you had to twist the yeah, head. And the clicking, and I'm like, this is a Happy Meal toy. It was Happy Meal toy level. So this one, it's like aesthetically and visually, it's essentially the same, but you also have the removal of that gimmick and mm -hmm. the addition of the accessory storage thing where you can put all the accessories in. That's something that import level R2-D2 figures don't even have. So mm -hmm. that was a bit of cool engineering. So you don't lose your accessories. The visual look is there, the shelf presence, the scale. And this is one of those where it was just so desperately needed and it delivered in spades. So I'm like, top 10. Oh yeah, 100%. Number five is really no surprise from us. It's the 2020 Imperial Stormtrooper masterpiece figure. Yeah, we used <laughs> to not include this on our top 10 of all time lists. I think last year we finally had it as an honorable mention. Wow. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, why is this not on the top 10? It is one of the best Black Series figures of all time. It is the best army builder mm -hmm. of all time out of any modern line. Yeah, I agree. It is a perfect representation of the Stormtrooper as far as proportions. Articulation with the butters and the deep cut single with the swivel. Mm -hmm. Their ability to aim down the sights is unmatched in the Black Series, yep. honestly. Give me a holster mm -hmm. for the, you know, it's like half and half. The right. ones in the original trilogy who have holsters. And yes, there are stormtroopers in the OT that do not have holsters. So don't comment that, please. I agree with you. I want one with the holster. Yeah. Just to have that representation. They're more common in like A New Hope. Mm -hmm. But masterpiece figure. Yeah. One of the absolute best. Speaking of masterpiece figures, <laughs> Nate, we're in the top four. Yes. This is a very typical choice for us. Coming in at number four is the Gamorrean guard originally a deluxe from target and then re-released as a deluxe at target mm -hmm. but this time on a card back it's like either or the paint yeah the, sh the shading the wash it's one of those figures that just hasbro goes so hard on and you're like why it's the Gamorrean guard. <laughs> yeah. Like, of course it is a great figure. It's an awesome design. I love Gam guards, but you're just like, of all the characters to go this hard on, yep. it's the Gamorrean. And they absolutely did. Like you said, tons of paint, great articulation, big bulky boy that's well articulated. The articulated jaw, one of the best features. Oh yeah. And the painted tongue and the inside of the mouth is so good. It's always heartbreaking thinking about those, we're gonna mention it, the Rancor photos where like the Gamgar just had so much personality and it would have been so great to yeah. have that pose on my shelf. He's like, like running away yes. from the Rancor yep. when it's holding it, about to eat it. Yeah, and you're just like, Mm, what could have been right the weapons have paint on them they have like yeah. this rust detail on him the soft goods expertly done yeah really especially well done. for being you know kind of big and poofy mm -hmm. but it looks photorealistic the pelt you know thing on the figure is so good and it doesn't take away from the figure and that's kind of a problem with black series is sometimes soft goods will actually make it look goofy it'll yeah. make it look like a doll right but not with the Gamorrean Guard. It's just, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those figures that I am super happy that it continues to get re-released yes. and it's never really fallen out of like print, so to speak. So right. it's been pretty easy to get because it's a masterpiece and you need two for your shelf. Oh my goodness, Nate. We are, I'm looking at these final three and they're just all so good. I feel like they're all interchangeable. Oh, under the right circumstances, they absolutely could be. Especially now, in you know the midwest with all this snow and sub-zero temperatures this one i'm like we we should take it outside and oh. photograph but then i realize it's like negative 22 degrees and i'm like not a good idea yeah. don't want to go outside it's the hoth rebel soldier yeah 
masterpiece figure. Mm -hmm. Butterfly joints, modern Black Series sculpt and articulation. The best thing about it though, is the customization, yeah. the variety. Something like nine different combinations with, between the goggles, the scarf, and the two alternate face plates yep. that are included with the figure. It's kind of crazy. And it was, at the time, a standard figure. And again, it was from that time period. Not 20, end of 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. Black Series just like turned a, turned a new leaf. It did. It really saved itself mm -hmm. especially with the galaxy packaging figures onward just so good and yeah like you were saying handkerchief down handkerchief covering the face goggles face plates i mean the introduction of the face plates is so cool there's still a decent amount of paint on the actual figure just with the small amount of like gray details and stuff like yeah. that and it is the first iteration of the a280 blaster oh, yes, rifle yes. like the rebel blaster rifle mm -hmm. also includes the dh17 however the only thing wrong with this figure is both of the weapons are unpainted yeah i can say with 100 percent certainty this would be my number one figure if they would just paint the weapons instead of doing hunks of sparkly gray plastic yeah, I really don't know why we've seen that shift recently in the Black Series where they've moved away from molded black plastic to molded sparkly gray plastic. And like, it's very dull and it's just... I, why is it sparkly? I don't know. I, what are the sparkles doing in it, there? It would just add so much value to these figures that they would start, you know, really painting the weapons, whether that be casting in black plastic and doing a little bit of dry brushing, like anything. Like good old days. Yeah anything still a masterpiece of a figure though number two this time around is another game changing figure of, again all of these game changing figures but it is the return of the jedi deluxe boba fett it has everything you need i i really was just about to say i don't know what i could really say about this figure that you look at the package it tells you everything you need to know great looking boba fett all of these accessories Wow. Flame effects, <laughs> blast effects, the the hook thing with the string and the the blaster that gets cut in half and it has that little like slice paint on it like mm -hmm. it gets sliced in half like in Return of the Jedi. The proportions pretty great. The articulation excellent especially compared to the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett that okay. we have in the line. Yeah. It's just excellent yeah it's it's one of those figures that is truly deluxe like you didn't mind paying that 30 dollar price tag because it is just chock full of accessories and it's boba fett one of the one of the best characters to ever do it the flame effects the jet pack is great no figure is perfect if they would have just done some kind of wash on the flight suit right masterpiece perfect figure yeah we're finally here it is number one what we think are best our favorite black series figure of all time when i look on the shelf what brings me the most joy what brings you the most joy we agree on this our number one black series figure of all time is the amazon exclusive oh. deluxe emperor palpatine that comes with his throne justin where's the sand trooper we will explain that at a later date this figure comes with three alternate heads which is basically unheard of mm -hmm. for the Black Series. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in the line, it came with lightning hands. Yes. This was something that was desperately needed in the Black Series. At the time, Emperor Palpatine was a pretty hard figure to get. Mm -hmm. And not only that, wasn't a very good figure. Ooh, no, he no, no. originally had a hard sculpted plastic yep. skirt. Did not come with the throne as well. So, But people would you know, custom print the throne, mm -hmm. you couldn't get him to sit because of the hard plastic. So they slightly retooled it, gave him all soft goods, included the throne, and the throne is incredible, mm -hmm. really nicely detailed, great paint apps. I love the purple chair. Yeah, like, like a purple cushion. I'm just glad that Palps has, he's just like, I want a purple cushion. Yeah, and that there's nice painted detail on both, you know, arms of the throne. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they just completely fixed the blue line figure which is pretty bad and he can sit perfectly alternate heads do you want him grinning or do you want him more neutral or do you want you know his 
I'm gonna kill you face with his force lightning. Right. The force lightning also very very good. It is definitive, and that's you know all the way back in 2013 they marketed these figures as definitive, and I was like, okay, that's a definitive Emperor Palpatine, and it's like if someone forced me to keep only a small amount of my collection it would be emperor on his throne a vader and a couple stormtroopers you know if i had to limit my collection down oh yeah i'm keeping that emperor yep and i hope those re-release uh rumors are true because everyone truly deserves a chance at this figure yeah and so there you have it there was our top 10 of all time hopefully you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you are new also let us know what your top 10 black series figures of all time are i'm sure everyone's list is going to be oh, yes. very different this is something that no two people are going to have the same exact list there's so many great black series figures so just remember to keep that in mind. This is our personal opinion list. If something on this list that you love is not included, that doesn't mean we don't like it. That just simply means it just didn't make the cut for us. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have a Vader on this list. Yeah. We didn't have the Sand Trooper on this list. Right, right. There are some omissions yeah you know and like we said we're definitely gonna let you know why those figures aren't included anymore but that'll be in a later video so subscribe and stay tuned for that and if you'd like to support the channel we do also offer a channel membership there are a couple different tiers you can check them out there are links down in the description below also make sure to join that discord get connected with the community lots of like-minded positive collectors over there yeah. to just talk and discuss and enjoy the hobby because that's what we should do this hobby should bring us joy it shouldn't bring us pain and misery for sure we just hit 1000 members of our discord so it's definitely the cool kids club it's the place <laughs> to be you know where else is the place to be every sunday at 1 p.m central time mm -hmm. here on the Out of the Basement YouTube channel, we do live streams. Yes. We just did a live stream this previous Sunday with Shill Squad, which is our little joke. It's Mike Case, Lance Beer, Luke, and Zach from the Black Series Cantina podcast. Super fun time. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably have a guest this week too. Yeah. Join us. As always, big shout out and special thank you to our current channel members. Your continued support is truly appreciated. And thank you to everyone else out there for watching. I'm Nate, joined with Justin. See you guys later. And we will see you all next time on Out of the Basement.